So that was it, the action from Penryn, where Cornwall were beaten by Rochdale Mayfield in a cracker back in round two. Mayfield actually beat Lee Minus Rangers yesterday, so they're through to the fourth round. Who will join them from this one here today? Thatcher Heath Crusaders against the North Wales Crusaders. My name is Matt Newsom, alongside me, uh, a man who knows Thatcher Heath very well. England international, played for the likes of Huddersfield, Wigan and Widnes during his professional career. Kevin Brown is here alongside us this afternoon. Uh, and Kevin, as you say, Thato, uh, as I say, Thato Heath, somewhere very close to your heart, no doubt. Good afternoon, Matt. Yeah, it is. It's a place that I played all my junior rugby or a lot of my junior rugby from being 12 years old to about 16 when I was signed for Wigan from that club. Uh, I owe a lot to the club. Uh, I had some fantastic coaches and, and got lots of memories. Played with some rugby league greats as well in uh, James Graham, uh, but also Carl Farber, who's a working to all of fame now. So we had a lot of decent players in our side. A lot of lads still going down there and got connections to this that we today, Matt. Yeah, Carl Farber, one of the, the great goal kickers of any era. Oh, he, he, and he were like that from being 10 years old. He was... Uh, he was diligent in his practice, but you see the facilities today. Um, you know, that's what we got to play on and train on. It was all a, a different place, but the facilities were really good. Not quite as good as this now. It's a shame that the barn has had a couple of ass and attacks on it there, but great place to play. The community get right behind it. The crowd will be good today. And um, yeah, that will really fancy this against North Wales. Yeah, North Wales Crusaders come in here. A local lad in charge of them in the shape of Carl Forster uh, and, and plenty of players who've, uh, who've played in the Saints ranks, which obviously are, are very close by is a big part of that, isn't it, uh, as well, who have come through there. Before we hear a little bit more from Kev, let's get to those uh, all-important team news details who will be involved here today at Thato Heath against North Wales Crusaders. We'll start with the home side. Mike Woods has picked a team full of uh, experience, plenty of pro experience in that squad as well, in the likes of Harry Reardon, Sean Kenny and Connor Dwyer. Uh, the halfbacks will be key. Reardon, alongside him, Jack Jones. Everything will go through them. And Sean Kenny, that experience at hooker, we can also drop into loose forward as well. So plenty of depth there for Thato Heath uh, the North Wales against the North Wales Crusaders. The National Conference League side up against League One opposition then. Carl Forster, as Kev Brown was saying before, will be a key in the back row. The player coach, plenty of experience there. There's a little bit of ex-pro experience, or should I say ex-Super League experience in the shape of Deck Hume. And another player to watch, who's also come from the National Conference League himself, uh, ex-Pilkington Rex player Owen Abel at fullback. Could also be an interesting combination. So it's all set up then for a cracker of a cup tie and the cup always brings a little bit of excitement and I guess Dato Heath, Kevin, have got that muscle memory of knowing what it's like to beat league opposition. They knocked out the North Wales Crusaders back in 2019 and there are nine of the 17 from that team are still involved uh, from the, the, the team that were, were beaten by Jewsbury Rams as they prepare to come out here onto the turf uh, the Challenge Cup there in attendance as well. That's what they're playing for primarily, I guess, at the at the end of the day. It'll be a, a long shot if uh, these two teams get there. But it's a, a taste of the big time coming to Thato Heath this afternoon, Kevin. Yeah, and this this is the cup final. Um, you know, the, the people are out watching the, the players play today because they've seen, like you say, the muscle memory from the, I think it was 2019, that they did so well in the competition. You know, they'll be trying to replicate that today. They're, they're big underdogs, but I think they really fancy it. There's a, you know, I've spoken to quite a few people, and they are confident. I spoke to Peter Eccles, who, who is now the coach at uh, Rochdale Hornets, and he's coached a lot of these young players for Thatwe, for Ian Wood included, and he tells me that there's some terrific players. They're very well coached, and and they have links to St. Helens, like you said. So, um, no, this is going to be a terrific game. Really looking forward to the start of the match. I think it'll be super, super aggressive, and emotions hopefully can be kept in check. Yeah, hoping for a good game. Don't forget you can get in touch with us at BBC RL on social media and we'll, we'll try to get to as many of those comments and uh, tweets and thoughts as we can throughout this game. It is part of the great conversation of Rugby League. So it'll be the Crusaders in red against the uh, Crusaders in black. <laughs> That's a Heath Crusaders. That is in black against the North Wales Crusaders in red. We'll have to stick to... Uh, 
the first names, I think, for this one. Uh, both sides sharing their little suffix. So it will be North Wales to get us underway. And Thato Heath, well, the uh, adrenaline will be pumping. And this is a big game for those uh, Thato Heath players. Testing themselves against league opposition. Players like Dan McGahn, who's just had the, a touch there, have been in the professional ranks in terms of uh, times during their career, particularly in the junior ranks, Kev. But, uh, you know, getting a taste of league opposition just ramps things up a little bit. Yeah, and that's Early a knock on that. by Carl Forster, the captain, leading the way. He looks huge, doesn't he, compared to this Thato Eve <laughs> pack. I think, you know, that might be one area that they do try and go through the middle. But... Aggressive defence like that will really help. Lots of Super League experience and Championship experience, like you say, on both sides. Um, and lots of these players will have played against each other before. But Thato Weave now need to defend really well on the back of this error. So it's a North Wales crew's greatest scrum, scrum, which Rainford plays out. They'll look to punch it out down this left-hand side. Will the North of Wales crew say this? It's Matt Reid that time who took it in. Jordan Andrade, who played in the most recent Rugby League World Cup for Jamaica, is toppled. So some early danger here for Thato Heath. As Rainford finds Forster, big ball playing forward. Trying to get Deck Hume away. Good scramble, though, from those Thato Heath players. This is not what they would have been wanting early doors, but they're standing up to it at the moment. Rainford gets the ball onto Taylor. Blackbrook and Oral St. James player. Rainford again to Forster. Oh, it's a loose pass that time. And out came Thato Heath and make the challenge. So they're certainly not standing on ceremony here. As the dink into the corner is taken well by Ryan Wood, but he's taken it out of play at the same time. A young player, St. Helens scholarship. One of those players taking advantage of that relationship, but a little bit of pressure here. Scott Michalowskis, the referee, uh, will take the scrum in field. And they are under the pump here, Kevin. Yeah, he's, I'm not sure what he could have done it differently, though, Ryan Wood. He was under it. was a great kick by Gibbons, the halfback for North Wales Crusaders. And uh, ultimately gets his team another set because it was pretty poor set. There was a bit of ball on the floor. So let's see if they can do any better with this one. Yeah, they are in range again. Some solid defence that time from Sumner and Hesketh. Forster, short ball for Andrade. The experience told that. And North Wales Crusaders have an early lead over Thato Heath. Jordan Andrade was just too big and too powerful. And they just made the pressure work. It's four points to nil to the visitors. Yeah, he was too big and too powerful, Matt. But it was the coach of the side, Cal Forster, the player the coach, player coach, sorry. He came up with the defensive hit to get his team on the front foot, but then he came up with some lovely subtle play in the previous set to go out the back to his half-backs. And on that occasion, I think they were expecting him to do the same again, and he just hit a lovely short ball to Andrade, the, the Jamaican international, who was just too big and left too much space, and he goes over for the first try. That week will be disappointed with the start of the game. couple of errors, uh, or one error, and running the ball into touch. Uh, but, yeah, they'll just have to start this game again. Yeah, Mike Woods is 45 next Saturday. And his his squad of players have had an early setback here. So, Brad Billsborough, Germany international, by virtue of his mother's German heritage, has popped over the kick. It's a six-point lead then for the visitors. And Dr Heath, I guess, just have to press... The reset button here people getting in touch with us on bbc rl tony robin says just about thawed out after yesterday's fun at oral st james uh middle limbs uh hurricanes were winners there last uh, yesterday 19 points to 12. that was old school rugby league he says copper in hand looking forward to the challenge cup on bbc sports so yeah bbc rl if you want to get in touch with myself and kevin so back to the middle they go they bike experienced player for this Thato Heath side involved here today, and it's the shock hair of Dante Morley Samuels who takes it forward. He has been on the BBC before, part of the Coventry team that beat Dissington back in 2018. 
And he's a lively winger, but uh, we're just seeing a little bit of what this means to those Stato Heath players. Kevin, as uh, Sean Kenny puts a shot in, a player who's yeah. got plenty of experience. He has, and, and this is much better from Thatter. We've they're sort of dishing out what they got given to him by Cal Forster and his troops. And it's just important that they keep their heads. You say yesterday you read that tweet, it was a proper old fashioned game of rugby. It was, and it was down to 10 men all at one stage. Three players sat down for fighting and, and penalised. <laughs> so uh, yeah. the game so far has been full of aggression, but played in the right manner too. Yeah, looking to get a play of the ball here for Billings. Billsbury should have said to get the kick away. Let's put that one. It's been allowed to bounce, and it was almost swiped there by North Wales. But Thatter Heath will get a bit of possession now. Proper a blood and thunder cup tie as McGarn went to play that ball. Scott Michalowskis has just shrilled on his whistle. Billsbury still struggling. He got he got taken off out just as. He went to put the kick in. I think it was legal. He jumped up in the air and ultimately I think he's landed on his shoulder or his arm. So this is massive for, for North Wales. If Billsborough can't get up, we, we've seen his quality with the boot already in this early part of the game. The combination with Dave Gil, uh, Gibbons and Billsborough, you know, is key to this result today. Yeah, Dave Gibbons, whose dad was part of the women's coaching staff at Leeds up until last season, ex Warrington Academy and Brad Billsborough, as you say. Uh, plenty of league experience for him, 60 appearances in senior rugby league. It looks as though he's OK. And we carry on here as McGarn plays the ball. And it's a chance for Jamie Tracy to have a bite into that line. Another one of those Rochdale players you were talking about, ex-Rochdale players in this uh, Thato Heath side. And the Giants have said the wheelchair rugby league team have taken a bit of time off from their uh, activities to watch this one on BBC RL. And John says, come on the Heath as well on BBC R. Oh, so get in touch if you can. So Thatcho Heath into a decent position now. Kenny. Now the pass thrown that time by Reardon and it's gone loose. And here come the North Wales Crusaders. It was Brendan Wood who jumped on that ball, that loose ball. Some slippery footwork now from Owen Abel. As I say, it's Pilkin to Rex, so he'll be fully aware of uh, what this level of football is all about. And he, uh, well, offside against Thato Heath, and it's a chance for... Uh, yeah, Thato Heath just strength. need to calm down a little bit with the ball, don't they, Matt? I think they're, they're getting carried away. They've come up with another error, and it was Billsborough who got in the line. And very, very lucky that, you know, that the centre didn't pick the ball up and go the length. Brandon Wood there, he got caught, uh, clawed back, but... You know, it's really important that they just calm down a little bit and get to the end of this. I don't think they've kicked the ball yet, so it's important that they just complete a couple of sets and just take the nerves out of this game. Taken in that time by Kieran Taylor. North Wales building for something as Rainford steps to the right. Bilber. Now Dekume. Oh, he's not far away. Scott Michalaskis says he's been held up. Rainford, that was a bit loose. Billsborough onto Forster again. He's such an integral part of what North Wales are looking to do. That link between defence and attack here and the backs and the forwards. As Chris Barrett has a go. Rainford to Forster. They've certainly identified that threat. As Jamie Tracy really pulling comes the in and Sean <laughs> Last one then, Rainford dropped off. Good defence that time. Just what they needed, Tato. He the set where they held for. Yeah, Cal Foster's really pulling the strings for for his side now. But the game stuck into him, like you said. And I, I just keep your eye on the front rowers and Cal Foster because there is a bit of needle going on out there. You know, and I think they've probably sent the message on. You need to get stuck into him. He's got too much time. He's almost playing like a ball player in the middle of the field at the moment, Cal Foster. It's a big set now for that week. They just need to clear the line and get to a kick, don't they, Matt? Absolutely. Yeah. Struggling for a bit of field position here, but plenty of endeavour on show as Max Dudley tries to get them on the front foot. Ex Wigan St Jude's was on Wigan's books. As I say, many of these players have been in professional systems. Ian Rushworth has gone for the, the early gag. I don't do predictions, but I'm going out on a limb and predict a win for the Crusade as well. You can't go wrong with that one, Ian. Quite literally. <laughs> yeah, that's on BBC RL, of course. So Kenny gets the ball away to Jones. Jack Jones, who hoists one. 
back toward Fiji with Barler. He's the co-captain. Integral part. But, uh, yeah, that was Reardon, wasn't it? And Kenny, the pair of them combining. Morley Samuels, now for the North Wales Crusaders. Owen Abel, two tries in his three games since stepping up to the semi-pro level. Is there a route through here, or will not the Thato hit side be able to shut down this play? It's Forster who's manhandled that time. Barrett out to Billsborough, in comes Abel again. He's a tricky customer, isn't he? Good footwork there, Kev. He is. He, he looks strong for his, his size, too. He bounced out. I think that's probably about four or five tackle bus already in this game. Billsborough with the kick. He was clobbered again. Referee says play on him again. Looks to get away, but that was like an axe, wasn't it, there from Pat Rainford? Oh, no, he's away, and they've called him back. <laughs> That happens like sometimes, kiss. the referee calls them offside yeah. and, and they actually move out the way and, you know, it looked like he was getting involved in the tackle. So Scott Michalowskis, he thinks he's doing the right thing by, you know, pulling them back and, and giving them the penalty, but I think he was aware there. Huddersfield Giants have given a shout out to uh, some of their Welsh supporters. We've got a flag just behind the sticks there. They're enjoying the action of BBC RL as well and Simon, who Unable to make it today, he says, gutted not to be at Thato Heath, hoping for North Wales win, back to watch it against Doncaster next Sunday. That's at BBC RL. So fans getting in touch, whatever your club, just trying not to set us up for anything dodgy. As Jamie Tracy. Jamie Tracy really gets stuck into this pack now, Matt. He's carried the ball well at the start of this game. Yeah, a bit between his teeth as Jones drops one off to uh, Sumner. Kenny, another crack at the line, this time from Hesketh, making ground here, Thato, maybe not at the rate they'd like to, Reardon, now they're opening the field up now and it's Pike who's a big part of the club, big character says his boss Mike Woods, coaches the under 10s as well as the kick goes up from Reardon, proper community feel about this Thato side, oh a bit of a juggle from Abel, went backwards and Morley Samuels, is able to pouch it, but this is where Thato Heath will be wanting to play the game, Kevin. This is ideal territory yeah. for them, at least. Yeah, it is, and I think Jack Jones and uh, Harry Reardon will be going back there against Owen Abel and, and trying to test him out more because we have seen how devastating he can be with a ball in hand, but he just looked a bit unsafe. There. I think they need to get the ball out you know, a bit more to this David Pike. He's a, he's a try-scoring freak uh, for, for this club, so... I think he was the top try scorer last year, uh, for, fourth after week. So they need to spin the ball out because he's looking dangerous. Yeah, described, as, described as hyper by his boss in there because you need that, don't you, if you're going to be that dynamic player. <laughs> Plenty of these uh, Thato Heath lads will be no doubt hyper all last night as they were preparing for this one. So it's a dink into backfield by Dave Gibbons. Clever kick. McGarn, who's been busy, will bring this ball away. Side from Witness Moorfield. Play for England and Lancashire at youth level. Described as the hardest trainer at the club by his club captain, Josh Crean, who's on the bench this afternoon. We'll see him at some point, no doubt, here. Tato Heath, then, we're going to take on... Sean Kenny. Ryan Ellis doing a lot of work. Just been left behind. That should be a knock-on. One of those, wasn't it? Kenny looked for that little short side pass. Carmen Stanley, DJ Wink says, who does the panel think will win the Challenge Cup this year? I mean, it's a tough one to call, isn't it, on BBC RL? I'd say, who would your dark horses be? I think uh, I'd, be, I'd be looking at a Salford. It just, I like the way they play. Say, I, I it watch, lends I itself to a bit of cup game. football, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Salford, how they're playing and how they're attacked Hull FC. At Hull FC yesterday, you wouldn't um, go against them. I played for them in... The last Challenge Cup final, I know how important they see that tournament, so um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they're, they're definitely the dark horses. Warrington too, I think they're due mm. a cup run, but there's some fantastic sides. Yep, still at the third round stage here. We'll be following them on the BBC. Here comes Pike. Oh, he's split the line! Great cover tackle from Deck Hume. That'll be a good battle this afternoon by the looks of things here. Taylor throws infield to Reardon. Now Jones, if, nice shape here. 
being shown from Thatcho Heath. Eventually, the tackle made. Over on that far side, Josh Crean is on now. Jamie Tracy again, tangling. Forster. I'd love to see his Rainford. stats. I think he's done about 20 carries already. <laughs> he's on it, isn't he? Hesketh. Nice little ball playing from him. A little short ball. Just mixing things up for Connor Dwyer. Fato Heath in range here. Kenny. Reardon. The stop start as he waited for the runner. And he came barreling in again, Tracy. So Kenny waits. Can Thato Heath find the kick? It's a nice kick. Just overcooked it a little bit there. Seven tackles set to come then for North Wales, but promising signs there for the National Conference League club. Yeah, and it's just a disappointment. One of the most experienced players there is Sean Kennedy. Just probably got a bit excited. Probably he was a little bit hyper again. <laughs> um, but yeah, once again, we saw that, that David Pike on this left edge for Thato Heath. I think if they can throw him the ball, it's going to be a great battle between him and Deck Hume. I mean, Mike Woods being the mischievous character he is he told me to mention that that uh, Sean Kenny had had his hair done in Turkey which is possibly why he's got his scrum cap on to protect it I think that's is that cheeky I, yeah I might I find out how much it costs because I'm think thinning there's anything wrong with that me <laughs> I think no exactly I need to get mine done prospective quotes BBC RL I'm only joking about the quotes so here comes Gibbons Rainford is waiting Forster's just up ahead of the play, which tells you that this was probably going to be kicked. It's Abel who just dribbles it into backfield. Oh, the bounce almost caught out. Daniel McGahn, but he got himself into the field of play. That kicked up awfully, didn't it? It looked like it was travelling, and then suddenly it just stopped. Yeah, it's a bit of a hybrid, the field. There is a bit of a synthetic um, weave in the field, so it does kick up a little bit different. Just looking at that week, they are looking a little bit sluggish now in the middle of the field. I think Mike Woods will have to make some changes. Jamie Tracy, he's done so much work so far. Just losing the battle in the middle of the field, territory-wise anyway. Yeah, they have got options on the bench. Tom Yates, Adam Carr, Robbie Ascroft. They say Josh Crane already on. Michelle Grundy, the BBC RL says, Michelle and Steve watching from Anglesey. Gutted we couldn't make it today. Come on the crew. So... A little bit of support for those North Walians there. And Steve well, Richmond saying up the Thato Heath. Sorry, man. Sorry, I was Kevin, just saying, I think, you suits, there. I think this suits uh, Thato Heath. There is a bit of needle going on in the game. Sean Kenny got hit late after the ball. Harry Reid will find the touch, but I think, you know, for North Wales Crusaders, they want to keep it as fast and as clean as possible. If they can get into a bit of a dogfight with this. Um, North Wales side that week. I think they'll really enjoy that. Yeah, just the one try so far. Jordan Andrade, the North Wales prop, steaming over on the back of some good work from Carl Forster. So here comes Tracy again. A little bit of ball movement at the line. Jones looking for an offload, gets one. Now it's time for Sumner to have a dig. They really are throwing plenty at this North Wales side. There's no fear, that's for sure. Maybe a kick to come here. Tracy runs a ground on a solid tackle. But again, not a backward step being taken. Kenny. Now Reardon looking to expose through Dwyer. Here's Pike. He's that weapon, isn't he? He's the weapon they're looking to. So strong. Dwyer also awkward pass. Reardon might be able to take advantage. She manages to wriggle clear of Rainford's tackle. Last one. In the set for North uh, for Thato Heath here. Kenny. Now Jones. Oh, it goes for the grubber. It kicked up. It spat up. What Scott Mikolaus is going to call here. I think he's saying turn turnover, turnover Matt, but I think the North, West, uh, North Wales Crusader touch that first I think they've got away with one there but they are in a good position now that way to front load some energy and be aggressive with the defence so Rachel Presley says BBC RL a mention for crew fan Mark Jones cycled to the game today in preparation for rides to Hurricanes and Cornwall he's raising funds for MND so fair play to him BBC RL 
North Wales Crusaders in possession. Can they add to their early score from Jordan Andrade? It's Carl Forster. He's the coacher of this team. Player coach. You don't see that too often these days, Kevin Brown. No, he's done it at a couple of clubs as well. And he's at the minute, I think he's been the best player on the field. He's definitely leading by example. So uh, Carl Forster is a player that... You know, Super League experience, genuine quality player, but obviously also technically very good as well. I think he has got his side, you know, prepared for this game pretty well. They're looking to move the ball, but defensively I've been really impressed as well. So Deckum's had to go off, head injury assessment interchange. And Matt Fletcher is on. So hopefully that will be all okay. That could be crucial, Matt, with the fact that we've seen how dangerous Dave Pike is already. Det Hume going off. He did have a split on his head. He got bandaged up, but can't carry on. I think they'll be looking to get the ball to Pike. So, as a kick from Jones, ricocheted. Was it played at? Scott Michalowskis has that decision to make. Doesn't look like he thinks it was. But again, they're turning the ball over in areas that are in their favour slightly here, Thato. Yeah, there's a bit of needle going on at the scrum as well now. Forster and, and Tracy, two leaders of the <laughs> retrospective packs. He's trying to get up on the skin of Forster because he knows that when Forster's got this time and space, he's just you know, playing really well. But I think they've calmed down now, haven't they, Matt? They, they look like they're in this game. They look like they can compete. And I think they're really enjoying it. That man is anyway, Jamie Tracy. He wants to fight everyone. Yeah, he's been... He's still got, still going, isn't he? This time with Jordan Andrade at the play of the ball. He's relishing it, isn't he? So there's plenty going on here. At Thato Heath, where the party will no doubt continue beyond the game, the clubhouse. It's a big afternoon in terms of getting fans through the gate as much as it is being on the BBC. As Andrade leaves... Uh, Jones on his backside for a moment. He's a big unit, isn't he, Jordan Andrade? And as we say, he's got international experience to go with his considerable club career. Oh, lovely little inside oh, ball to Abel. Forster just opening the doors there. Those soft hands, that subtlety you're talking about. It's not just crash and bash, is it? Got some big boppers in their side. Fletcher is in the frame there, just to the right of... Number seven, Brad Billsbrook, but it's Forster again, plays at the line. Manchester pitch up into the hands of Abel. Yeah, not everything's come off, but he has looked very dangerous. He's just been whacked there off the ball. He's on his shoulder, so he's a player that they really need to keep their eye on. Kicking, oh, McGarn got spooked by the bounce. Just about got there. Mind I you. I think it's a penalty, Matt. Dave Gibbons yeah, so I thought, got yeah. taken out after he kicked the ball. Been really impressed with yeah, Dave Gibbons, his kicking game, especially so far in this in this opening 20 minutes or so. He's had it on a string. So it will be tapped this by the looks of things. Pat Rainford has the ball in his hands. Plenty of willing recipients as well. Thatcher know what's coming. Trying to get off the line to shut down Jordan Andrade. Oh, and it's come loose from the tackle from Ken. He went backwards. Said Scott Michalowskis. So the assault continues here. But Thato have stemmed the flow just for the moment. Bills were on to Fletcher. Good ball movement here. Looking to get Taylor away. Oh, forward pass. Thato's pressure paying off Kevin Brown. Yeah, they'll be disappointed with that. They have been moving the ball and they look really threatening. I think uh, it looks really good when they go big man to big man. Andre and, and Forster in the middle of the field. They came a little bit wider. And it, they were trying to get Owen Abel free, but yeah, they survive another one there, Thatterweave. But it's important that they just keep the discipline. A couple of times now, they give penalties away for just being a little bit too keen and putting too much pressure on the kicker. So scrum time. As we wait for this ball to come back into play. Philip Walker says, what round do Super League clubs enter the Challenge Cup? In the past, they've come in at different stages. 
eight to 12, etc. going at one stage. But they all come in, all 12 teams come in this year at the sixth round stage, which is when the Challenge Cup kicks off on BBC Network. So we'll go from streaming games on the red button through to network, so BBC One and BBC Two at the sixth round stage. And I think that is in around about mid-April, that one. So plenty of Royal Billy to come. In fact, it's the mid of, middle of May when that kicks in, the 18th to 21st of May for round six when the Super League clubs join. That's on BBC RL. Fans getting in touch with us here. Chris Chatton saying, anyone living in Scotland, check out the Giants wheelchair if you want to give wheelchair at Rugby League a go. I mean, the World Cup just highlighted how good that can be. Reardon puts up a kick. Tester at the back for Abel. And he takes it with Conor Dwyer right in his eye line. It was almost as if Dwyer was saying, the minute you hit the deck, I'm going to leather you. But he, he had sidestepped him quite nicely there. And although he did eventually get tangled up by Pine. Yeah, and I think it's a smart play to put Owen Abel under some pressure with the high balls. But they need to definitely chase better as a group. I think if they leave it you know, a little bit unorganised, he, he almost went through there. And he's very, very dangerous. So get that line. Sean Mike Woods, the coach of that week, will be saying, if you've got to pressure him, pressure him as a unit. Dale McCarthy says, can you wish the Tato Heath under-14 girls good luck in the new season next week as they kick off at home against Oral St James. That's a classic community game fixture, that, isn't it? North Wales, I should say, Tato Heath there. against Oral St James. <laughs> Blackbrook, Oral St James, Tato Heath, it's, it's almost... Magical, yeah, isn't glamorous. it? Glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> Little dink over the top from Gibbons. Again, they've targeted that edge, haven't they? Dan McGahn must think, what have, what, have they thought, what have they heard about me? Because they've peppered him with those little kicks into backfield. And to be fair, he's fielded every one with, with pretty much consummate ease. So, yeah, I don't think they see a weakness in Wood. I think it's more the strength of uh, Dave Gibbons. He's a left-footed kicker on that left edge for... North Wales and he's just at the minute he's just finding so much space and they are trying to shut him down but like I said on the previous set he was too eager and give the penalty away so at the minute Thato just pending their own half Matt but this is a better run yeah Robbie Ascroft has come on and he's setting a target here and Kenny picks off the back of that dragged down by Matt Fletcher and Kenny wants a penalty there but he's not getting one but Tracy's gonna have another dig and he runs at some big opponents. Ryan Ellis that time was the recipient of his shoulders. Jones plays late. Oh, it's a lovely pass. It went to ground. And this is where they're dangerous here. Ankle tap just about stopped Dave Gibbons. That was ebb and flow, wasn't it? I think he might just have collided with the knee of Dan McGahn there. So he gets back to his yeah. feet, but an exciting passage. It's been, a, it's been an eventful game, hasn't it? It has, it's been brutal and it's just turning up now where there's a few little errors and, and mishaps with the ball. But it was a great shot by Matt Fletcher to dislodge the ball and then Dave Gibbons looked like he was going away. But what a what an introduction there by the substitute Brandon. Brandon Brad is there. He, he just comes off the back fence and knocks the, the hole in the defence. Barrett on the that carry. Forster. Gonna weave his way through. Thato Heath pinned on their own line here. As Rainford looks up, Brad Brennan wants a carry here, and he's got some bulk about him. Oh, he went for Fletcher. The ball's been picked off. It's Connor Dwyer, I think, who's come up with it. Really smart play. Here was the pickpocket was, there, Kev. Yeah, that was great play because it it looked for all the world that Brad Brennan had found his his teammate, and, and he was going to score the try, but Conor Dwyer, yeah, he did fantastically well to intercept the ball and, and put his team back on the front foot. BBC RL, we're seeing the widespread appeal of Rugby League as John Smallwood is watching down in Wimborne in Dorset. Supporters up in the north are lucky to have proper sport right on their doorsteps. Come on, Thato, he says, you can win this if you move the ball faster. That's at BBC RL. Uh, James Hoskins says, tremendous performance by Salford yesterday at Hull. And the Thato Heath under-13s girls want a shout-out, Kev, from you as uh, the ball is returned with interest by Brandon Wood for North Wales Crusaders. They start against Ellen next weekend. So Thato Heath girls looking for a shout-out from you, Kev. 
Oh, well, good luck to, uh, to all the girls in, in rugby league and especially the Thatterweave from the 13s. Hope you have a great game and get off to a good win. So it's Owen Abel doing a lot of half, uh, dummy half duties as well as operating at fullback this afternoon. Forster, short ball. Oh, Brennan was coming on like a train. Great, Great tackle. Oh, <laughs> it chopped him in half. Owen Abel picks off the back of that. Slick play here from the North Wales Crusaders. Gibbons, who doesn't look to have taken any longer-term damage from that early knock, because a kick over the top that McGarmoch is behind. It'll be a seven-tackle set here for Thato Heath in there. New kit looking resplendent. And then Scott McAllister probably the blows first. his whistling. <laughs> probably the first time it's been a poor kick. Matt from Dave Gibbons. See Carl Forster struggling in the, in the background. So with Sean Kenny. But yeah, I think, you know, it's it's almost copy and paste from North West Crusaders at, at the minute. They're going up the middle with the big boys and then Owen Abel's coming in and then it's finished off with a great kick normally by Dave Gibbons. I think they just need to slow that rook down and slow the play ability from Owen Abel because I know he's only small but he's looking really really dangerous the longer this game goes and the more tired and fatigue are into them legs of the Fatawee front rowers so Sean Kenny as you say just having the check over back up on his feet business as usual for him I think there's a green card here so he's going to go off for a couple of minutes while they bring on a so he can't come back on for another two minutes because he went down injured. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've got to feel hard done to him, those, Matt, because there's three of them. Yeah, there's three of them North Wales Crusaders that could be had the same colour card, the green card. Yeah, it's so one of those, um, isn't it? It's to stop people from sort of milking an injury, but it, didn't, it certainly didn't look like a milking of an injury, did it? That one. No, and if anything, the fact we've had probably. Wanted to uh, tap that quick, didn't they? Yeah, you could see the look on Dan McGann's face when he realised he was going to have to um, halt his act of taking that ball in. But Thato Heath looking to pick their way through some of those North Wales defenders here. Really good game here at BBC RL on the red button and on the BBC website and app, of course. Sato Heath trailing North Wales by six points to nil. That Jordan Andrade try converted, but it's been entertaining fair. Jones goes for the big boot downfield. He's got plenty on that. Oh, well, Owen Abel just had to 20. leave that. What a kick. Well, Scott Michalowskis, I'm looking for him to do that little tap on, the, on his foot, but that is a 40-20. Isn't oh, it? He's saying his, his foot's over the line. He's unfortunate there. Ah, oh, it's just Jones. far off, surely. It's a big kick, but it's, uh, well, it's, a, it's a kick that relieves the pressure, certainly. Yeah, and that's what they needed. I think, you know, kicking a little bit earlier, relieving the pressure and turning these big men around because they are much bigger than their opponents, the North Wales Crusaders. Just turn them around, make them move. They can bring it off the roll line because it looks much better this set already. Yep, Dave Pike involved, snapping into contact there, along with Connor Dwyer. There's Forster now back up, having had the repairs. Tracy digs into his midriff and takes him down third man. Plenty of big shots going on here. Brennan, who's been a menace since coming on, on the stampede. Now Gibbons thought about the uh, the kick and then instead looked to exploit something wide with Matt Reed. And Gibbons was keen to get involved there, but he'll leave it to his dummy half. Rainford to Gibbons. And again the kick goes up. McGarn at the back takes it. And actually, he's done well to take that into a decent starting point for the set here, as he's absolutely blasted. <laughs> by a couple of lads probably twice his size <laughs> yeah valu valuable meters once again just think, yeah they do uh, one of the one of the listeners has, has sent in to you matt saying they need to move the ball a little bit quicker and i completely agree 
think if they can move the ball, look again, they get caught with the ball. They just need to move that ball, make these big men you know, think about what they're hitting rather than just charging it straight in. Because once again, you see that that's not going to work. They move the ball, they've got some real talent, especially in Pike on this left edge. Yeah, they'll try and release Jack Jones, but he's mopped up. Now the kick fired away from Reardon. He's got plenty of distance on that. And will take game. Brandon Wood. Yeah, back into almost back to his own goal line there, Kev. Yeah, and I really like the chase on the back of that now. We said before about, you know, there was a bit of a disjointed chase. On this occasion, it is a good chase, and you have to be, you know, they're so big. That's Dante Marley Samuels coming back. So big and athletic, this backfield for North Wales Crusaders that, yeah, that, that chase is only as makes the kick, really. And this is a great set and a great shot on Ryan Ellis from the Thato lads. Lee Jennings says, looks a decent crowd there today. When's the draw? Wednesday, I believe, is the draw for the next round of the Challenge Cup. Wednesday at 6 p.m. on the BBC iPlayer. So you can get that on the BBC iPlayer, BBC Sport website as well for the draws for rounds four and five. That's at BBC RL. There's the kick from Gibbons. Down the throat this time for Daniel McGarn, who was covering. And here come Thato Heath. Into the arm wrestle very much, aren't we? Both sides finishing the sets well, as a coach would like. I guess, as you say, North uh, Thato maybe just looking for a bit more adventure, and they've got a bit here from McGann. He's looking sprightly now, McGann. Connor Dwyer punches it forward. Crean. Now to Reardon. That's a tackle from Brennan. But again, it's making those big lads work, isn't it? As Jones gets the kick away. He's got plenty on that. It's been allowed to bounce. Oh, could have gone anywhere then. Dante Morley Samuels took a gamble and it just about pays off, Kevin Brown. Yeah, and if there is one area that you do look a bit susceptible to, the, the team from Wales is, is just putting the ball up high and, and they're looking at each other to collect it. I think Mike Woods at half time, and well, there's probably three or four minutes to half time, just uh, you know, keep putting it up there. It's an important couple of minutes now. I think the crowd have got into this. They, they realise that they're banging this game now. That or I think before half time, if they could just move the ball a little bit more and try and get some points, or well, they're going with the tails up. Bit of a shove there from Barrett on Dwyer. Didn't like the treatment he was afforded that time. Pike and Ashcroft making the challenge along with Connor Dwyer. He's been busy. He's been involved in pretty much every rook in this set here. Forster gets the pass away to Abel. Some dynamic running from him. He's struggling to put him down eventually. He runs into Reardon. Harry Reardon, ex Rochdale player, of course. A little chance for Kieran Taylor to dart forward. There's Gibbons. Plenty of time to get the kick away. This time it will be taken out on that right hand side. And Thato Heath. Just being made to play out from the back again. And there's a bit of fatigue. A bit of fatigue now coming. Well, there is a few minutes left. Just think that away for just getting the ascendancy through the middle of the field. That line speed has definitely slowed now from North Wales. I think that will just need to get over the halfway line and then start to move the ball, start to look at how they can break down with Harry Reardon and Jack Jones. Just a reminder that the clock, by the way, isn't in tandem with the timekeeper. So it's more of a guide than any kind of uh, gospel. A little kick from Reardon looking to chip and chase. Taken late. Penalty. And just a word from BBC RL. Steve Webster says, watching for Sonny Blackpool. Come on, Thato. Looking good and making North Wales Crusaders work. Make it my birthday to remember. And he's got a pint of the black stuff in front of him as well, which uh, I might be joining him in later. So happy birthday to Steve. Sorry, yeah, Kevin. This is a crucial part now, Matt, where the, the penalty, Harry Reid, and I really like the fact that he's just probing away. It was a chip and chase there. 
just make them think something a little bit different because they're so physical. I think this pack just needs to be moved around, try a bit of off the cuff, second phase play, especially with you know only a couple of minutes or so to go before half time. Or chance your arm a little bit, get some points on the board and get this crowd really on your side. Yep, just a six points in it. As Kev was saying, Jordan Andrade's try. In the early part of this game, it was almost caught Thato cold, didn't it? But uh, they've responded well. And we're in for a real good cup tie now as the tap from Pike finds Reardon. Moved along the line into Ashcroft's hands. Adam Carr is on. And he's looking to wind up here, perhaps, for a carry. Instead, it's Reardon. Pike out the back. They ran into Brandon Wood. Billsbury also involved. Dwyer. Reardon. That's I've got good shape here. Jones. Oh, he sort of oh. ran out of <laughs> options there as the kick went in behind. Molly Samuels has left it to bounce. So enable has to come up with it. And he is forced behind his own goal line. And that will be a dropout here. So that's not a bad end to what looked a bit of a scruffy finish to the set, Kev. Yeah, no, I, th I just wanted him to keep the ball alive. It was the last tackle uh, of the half. And, you know, if they just kept it, I just felt like it was a panic kick. That they didn't look on and he almost telegraphed it as well. So, Thatterweef will be relatively happy that, you know, the bang in this game. I think nerves and, and a little bit of emotion got to him at the start of the game. Like you say, they got caught cold with that Andre try. But apart from that, it's been a, a real good contest. Very close. Jamie says, good scrap this on BBC RL. And Craig Davis uh, also says, can we have a shout out for William Warriors PDRL physical disability rugby league team who start their season next weekend against Leeds and Hull KR. The PDRL and the learning uh, disability rugby league, big parts of the rugby league offering these days. Uh, so plenty more to come from myself and Kevin Brown for the second half. But don't forget, there's also lots of other live sport across BBC Sport this weekend. So here we are, second half, not a million miles away. In fact, uh, very close as some of the players just starting to emerge out back onto the field here at Thato Heat. Six points to nil in the favour of the North Wales Crusaders in that first half. Uh, one of the third round ties, one of the standout third round ties. This one, of course, uh, Thato Heath against North Wales. Repeat of that 2019 encounter when it was the National Conference League side that came out on top before today, yesterday's results from the Challenge Cup third round Hunslet beat Westgate Common uh, 15 points to 12 Rochdale Mayfield would beat, in, uh, beat the Lee Miners Rangers 38-10 uh, it was the Midlands Hurricanes who came out on top against Oral St James as uh, Kev was saying in the first half 19 points to 12 in that one London Broncos beating Whitehaven 32-10 and West's Warriors from West London the uh, amateur club, the community club down there, gave it a real fist against Widnes. They were beaten 80 points to four, having switched their tie up to the northwest uh, to uh, just to kind of give themselves an experience. And then it actually cost quite a few of their players a bit of money to do so. But fair play to them. They had an experience a day that they'll never forget against a really uh, quite impressive Widnes side these days under. John Keir as well. The rest of the ties today, standing me against Newcastle Thunder, kicked off at 12, so I'll try and get you a latest on that one. Batley against Wathbrow kicks off at 2. Dewsbury against Rochdale kicks off at 2. Siddle against Sheffield, that's another nas uh, national conference side, our community club, uh, kicking off at 2.30 against the Sheffield Eagles, 1998 winners, of course. Uh, 3 o'clock kickoffs, Barrow against Swinton. Bradford against York Acorn, another community club involved there. Dew Dewsbury against uh, Workington. Uh, Featherstone against Halifax, proper West Yorkshire derby, that one. Hunslet against Keithley, another West Yorkshire derby. And York against Bowling from Bradford, the boys from Bradford, where they've produced many a good player over the years. And Kevin Brown, you were saying, uh, as you were saying, you were caught a bit in that Oral St James game. The community comes really standing up, and, and even if they're not coming out with the results in, in, in this round three, they've certainly done themselves some, some pride as a, as, a, as, a, as a notion, haven't they, that, that community clubs have got plenty to offer. Oh, definitely, and I think the... The fact that they're able to test themselves against this next level up. Um, and there's been nothing in this game today and there was nothing in, in that game yesterday. 
you know, like I said before, there was a lot of ill discipline in that game. I'm not seeing a rugby league game go have to <laughs> 20 players on the field. Um, so, so the referee were very busy in that one as well. But so far today, I think it's been a, a really terrific contest. Very, very close. I think that's we, you know, if, if Mike Woods is, has been in there and just said with a few things a little bit different, we can really challenge for North Wales Crusaders. I think Carl Forster has been at the heart of everything. So, but it's been great to see, you know, the community game really championed. Uh, and, and I just hope they can get a couple of scores and keep this terrific game going. Yeah, Thato Heath kicking off. Fletcher, oh, he was judo tossed there, wasn't he? Big shot from Pike, who took him down. He's a big lad himself, and Mike Woods was saying as much. Just a quick word as well. Pat Plusky makes a really good point here on BBC RL. Good game, good, good game, good crowd at Thato Heath. Thanks to all the volunteers at Community and Pro Clubs who have cleared the snow in the last 48 hours plus uh, cleaning the surrounding areas as well. Medical staff, match officials for getting involved and, and being flexible as well to make sure that the games have gone ahead. And I think that's a really good point because, I mean, obviously I know you were saying over that side of the country, Kev, it's not been too bad, but there have been some real snow bursts, haven't there, over the, the country over the last 48 hours. And, uh, you know, quite a lot of clubs have had to work overtime to get their games on. Yeah, and that's the great thing about the community. The, it always comes together, um, you know, for the rugby and, and the sport. And like you say, there hasn't been much much snow over in Lancashire. Um, so they wouldn't have been too busy this time, but they would definitely put their hands up. Just interestingly, I'm just watching an ex-teammate of mine has come onto the field, Jack Horton. You know, the big back rower there, he is involved in the tackle. Keep your eye out for him, Matt. He'll... Um, He'll be impressive when he, he gets the ball. He's big, strong and athletic ball carrier. Yep, he's uh, looking to top 100 appearances this season, isn't he, in his career? It's a target for him. As tackle goes in that time from Chris Barrett, who's been busy. Tracy hasn't certainly hasn't put the bat on down for Thato Heath. Doing big minutes, big yardage too. Is the kick from Reardon. There's plenty of distance on it, and Owen Abel, who we were impressed by in that first half, might just have a chance here as he offers that one up to Dante Morley Samuels, and he's proving a little bit difficult to put down, is Dante Morley Samuels. Conor Dwyer eventually wrapping those legs. There's a real ebb and flow to this one here as Owen Abel sets off on a little canter. Yeah, and that's what I think Thato really need to watch, the, the strength of Dante Morley Samuels is, is something that has been really... He kept him quiet in the first half, but you know, there's ominous signs there. If he's going to bring the ball back 20, 30 yards, every time he carries the ball in the kick return, it's going to be a long afternoon for Thato. Yeah, just saw a bit of Houghton there as he took that ball forward. Now Forster takes it into the line. Last one here for uh, North Wales. Six points to nil from that first half. It's a, a kick over the top from Gibbons. And, well, he had his foot, for me, I thought he had his foot behind the line when he took that. Um, yeah, I think he's been... Down the uh, gun, but... Oh, it's gets squared up now, he gets the set, set restart. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. He, get, he gets the set restart now, but yeah, I think he's been a bit unfortunate there. Yeah, I'm sure he had his foot over the line. Well, another kick, a good kick by Gibbons to put the pressure on Thato. Nathan Taylor taking a carry in that set. So, uh, Jamie Tracy plays the ball that time. McGarn again into the in attack. The morning, trying Jamie to... Tracy. <laughs> He's yeah. carried some ball. Yeah, big man, ex-England Community Lions player. He certainly hasn't taken a backward step in this one at all. Josh Crean stepping into acting half. A little clip over the top that time. Forcing Abel to take that on his own 10. And the chase isn't bad either from Thato Heath. Oh, Josh Crean straying a little high there, but Abel was uh, quite literally able to slip away from that. Mind you, they've gone back for the penalty call. Scott Michalowskis will award that one to the North Wales Crusaders, who lead by uh, six points to nil here. Yeah, they'll be disappointed with that, but such a good ball carrier, uh, Owen Abel. His footwork's terrific, but he's strong and he just ducked under the challenge there. And they really need to just end the sets a little bit better. And it's not necessarily the kicks, 
it's more the chase whether they can you know on the previous set Dante Marley Samuels ran through and that one Owen Abel's won the penalty they just need to start the sets off or end the sets a little bit better yeah, Barrett takes it in for North Wales now I don't want to get Joey in trouble here but he has messaged us so I'm, I'm you know, kind of going to read it out anyway he says wish I was there today unfortunately the wife said we were having Sunday brunch with the neighbours save me that's at BBC RL <laughs> oh Joey no worry, Joey. Just watch it on your phone under the table. Oh, they're away here. Matt Reed really taking some stop in the centre. They've got some punch, haven't they? This North Wales side out wide. Abel, Forster. More direct approach from the player coach at the moment, Kev. Yeah, and I think that's just a variation in his game. I think he's probably said, look, we have put a bit of ball down in the back end of that half. I'll show you how it's done. But he's still looking to get his hands on the ball now, and I'm sure he'll be a pass. Oh, it's a lovely offload there from Barrett. And there was Dave Gibbons. Well, they've made that pay. It was slick hands. Chris Barrett somehow managed to squeeze that ball out. And Dave Gibbons pushing up, as all good halfbacks should. And that's a second try for North Wales, and it's a crusher for Thato Heath, who were just really managing the arm wrestle weren't they well they, they were managing and they were staying in the fight but i think the way that they were you know turning over the ball and then giving away penalties or or quick rooks i think they were really inviting this good side and that's where they look really dangerous north wales crusaders because they are so big and strong not necessarily got as much pace as that we but when they get close to the line mat they look really dangerous and that it was that man uh carl forster again with a short hands to barrett very similar to the try of Andre in the first half, but on this occasion, he did get tackled. And like you said, it was great play by Dave Gibbons just to pop up on his left shoulder and finish the try. This might kickstart now, though, a little bit of life and moving the ball for Thato, which I think will be really dangerous when they do start to do that. Third try of the season for Dave Gibbons, who's just lining up to kick his own try. Look to convert it. But yeah, Thato Heath, sometimes it is it's poking the beast, isn't it? It's the second time in this game they've conceded early and a half. It's a 12-point ball game now. But no doubt, Thato Heath will come out firing. Yeah, they just need to get the, the, the crowd on side. It's gone a little bit quiet. They're expecting things today, the Thato Heath fans. I think the players just need to throw the ball around a little bit more. They're not going to go through this side. They need to open the spaces up, make them think they're going to attack wide and then go through the middle maybe because running into the big boys in the middle of the field so far, it's just been, it's just not been working, Matt. No, it hasn't. Joey has replied to say that the TV was on in the pub and now his wife has heard what he said. And it looks like he'll be in the doghouse. Well, he did message Joey, and, you know, it was just too good not to read out that one. So, paying the price there for his honesty, isn't he? You know. Yeah, lucky, Joey. Hope you have a good afternoon with the family. <laughs> and now, you know, he's got to try and manage that relationship with his neighbours now as well, which is, uh, you know, that's a slightly awkward one, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, here comes Brennan. Bumpers up, nice little offload as well. It's a flick, a, a tapped flick. Somehow worked into the hands of Owen Abel. Just as it looked as though Thato Heath were going to swipe that one. It was Pat Rainford with a little bit of ingenuity there. Barrett, he's carried well. Vulcan ballast in that pack for North Wales. Former Coventry and Midlands Hurricanes man. Across both variations of that club. Quick play the ball that time from Forster. Gibbons pushes back on the inside for Barrett. At one stage, does the potential extra conditioning kick in here from a semi pro side to a, a community one? I'm not sure. I, I know that we've trained really hard. They look in good shape. If anything, they look in better shape. I think they're the more mobile of the sets, uh, especially in the forwards. I, think, I just think they need to move the ball, Matt. I think size-wise, 
just going into the teeth of him and we'll probably see Tracy again. And he'll put his hand up all day long, but just running straight into the middle of this big unit, moving the ball. A little bit like how Salford play, move the ball, get the ball. And we've seen the edges are, are very talented and very strong. You know, Pike on the left, I've not really seen much of it since his first uh, break of the game. That likewise, Nathan Taylor hasn't been too busy. Again, a player who could maybe spring things from backfield. It's Ashcroft that time. Another rattle into the gut that time from Pat Rainford, who put himself about there to stop Adam Carr from making progress. They will look to spread it here. Connor Dwyer, that's a lovely pass, and here goes Pike. He's away. Oh, look for the pass back on the inside. It's been recovered, though, by Reardon. That's more like it from Thato Heath. Yeah, get the ball out wide, the, the, the dangerous out wide, Matt. Dwyer. Settling carry from him into a point. Crean just tosses that one up there. Ashcroft again is put to the floor. Now be Jones, takes it right to the teeth. Short ball, oh, they're almost in. Tom Yates. This is it, the Thatcho fans paying for a score here. Crean had to. Ridden just couldn't prize his way through. We're in great ball though here. Flick back to Jones. Jones oh. with the pass to Tracy. Kept alive somehow. They went through Adam Carr. That is the reward for Thato Heath. And there's a wry smile on the face of Carl Forster, the North Wales player coach. But we saw just what Thatto either made of with some ingenuity, a little bit of off the cuff, and, and they've got themselves in. Yeah, well, it was a lovely bit of play by Jack Jones to get the the big centre, Dave Pike, free. And he found Harry Reardon, albeit via North Wales Crusaders' hand. But on that occasion, they just tried to get him up the middle of the field late on in the fifth tackle. They looked like they were going to kick the ball. It was a great bit of play. Ball ricocheted once again. I think it was a little bit fortunate, if, um, if I'm honest. Thought there was a knock on in there, but that's what they need. They need to move the ball, get the crowd on side, and really get this party going. You know, the bang back in this game now. You'd expect that Jack Jones puts this kick over. Game on, Matt. Absolutely right in front. Almost, oh, it's just to the left of the uh, black dot, isn't it? Here for Jack Jones. Well, that would have lifted the crowd, as you say. That would have got things pumping. North Wales Crusaders lost their opening two League One fixtures. They did beat the Royal Navy quite comprehensively in the Challenge Cup, but that's a good kick. And we're back within a score now. And this cup tie could just get interesting, as you say. Yeah, and I just thought they, they learn from that, that they don't try and tighten things up and and play patient and safe. I think if that were going to win this game, it's going to be through moving the ball. You know, I think they, they look dangerous out on the edges, and I think North Wales look vulnerable out on the edges too, so move the ball, more of the same. We've got a game now. We have indeed try that time from Adam Carr. And so, the restart just delayed slightly as Dave Gibbons collects the ball. And Fato Fato Heath, back on now as well, Matt. This, yeah. That's a big, that's a big uh, move forward, isn't it, for this Thato Heath side because he is talismanic as much as his abilities with the ball as well. And Robbie Ashcroft's run hard, hasn't he? He's come on and again he's not the not the biggest but he's certainly putting himself about North Wales trying to stem the flow here on the back of that score Pike that time Tracy <laughs> oh, he's running amok he's been great today he's like a racehorse he's tethered trying to get away all the time isn't he he's wild he's making problems for this North Wales side, clever kick in behind. Owen Abel scampering after it. You can see the chase there from Adam Saunders. 
And likewise, Kenny, likewise, Jack Jones and Owen Abel. Welcome back to Thatcher Heath Park for the ex Pilkington Rex player, Dante Morley Samuels. Then Sean Kenny's tackling everything that moves here. Yeah, and the crowd are, are, are right into this now. It's important that they just finish this set off and, and get them to a kick because I really think that they're worrying North Wales Crusaders now. You do have to say that. Oh, here comes Jack Horton again, who's another you know, those those players. When you've had a couple of tackles like that and the crowd are getting on, and then suddenly Brad Brennan just tucks it under his arm and takes about five players with him. That's just the kind of set leveller you want, isn't it? But that's uh, a really good take in backfield here. By Magan, who who's fielded sure. plenty. And then gets one right into the ribs. It was a double tackle, wasn't it, on him there? From Sean yeah, Costello. Well, it's this time. It's, it's been his defence that he's chased his own kick, but he knows this is only the third tackle and they're getting up to halfway at the end of this set. Hopefully, for the Thatter Weave side, it will be an attacking kick at the very least. So, almost up to the 40. Kenny, Reardon, relates the pass. Hesketh brings it in for McGarn. He's busy again. Some are on the shoulder, but they'll come back to Jones. Reardon's got space to get a kick away. Tester at the back here. It's swirling all over the shot. Wood couldn't bring it in. The pounce. Just a let off there for North Wales because that went up and there was plenty of chase. There were plenty of bodies in the frame there, Kev. Yeah, and it looks quite windy. We're looking at the flags. You know, it does look like quite windy, but I think that's a third or fourth occasion now that the ball has been allowed to bounce. So far, we just need to keep doing that, keep putting the ball up in the air and put numbers around. So far, you know, North Wales have got quite lucky that the ball has bounced in touch. But some occasion, if they put numbers around the player, well, that ball will definitely bounce in their hands. Shout outs for Callan Dobson from Thato Heath under eights requested. One for Jaden Armstrong from the under tens. Come on, Thato, says Matty. And Sophie says, excellent, confident play, Thato. Keep at it. And go on, has a reared. And that's at BBC RL. Joining the conversation here on this Challenge Cup third round tie, where both sides have really. Up their game, delivered an entertaining contest so far. Again, that clock, by the way, just a guide. Oh, enable! Oh, they tried to put him through a hole. Penalty goes, and there we go. That's the first blow, -up, proper blow up we've had. It's been pretty well contested so far, Kev. But uh, yeah, it's well, Jamie Tracy. I, I thought it was quite hard done to. He's, he's hit him hard. I'm not sure if it was, you know, I, I don't think it was late, and I think. You know, the players running in caused the issue. But it was better defence. They, they saw, we saw in the first half, Forster to Abel, you know, created a break. And on that occasion, the gap was shut. Unfortunately, it was a, an illegal tackle. Yeah, ball to touch, taking a bit of time for it to come back. Joey's awkward afternoon at the pub with his neighbours and his angry wife. He says, <laughs> the update is that that try is worth the daggers from the wife. All night now. So he's happy. He might be in the bad books, but he's happy. That's at BBC RL. So try that try, which has made it 12 points to six converted. Still an open cup tie this one. North Wales fans have made the trip. There's plenty of Thato locals in there roaring on their team. Oh, looking to get away this time. It's a smart ball for Ryan Ellis to charge on to. And then the penalty goes against North Wales Crusaders here are in a good position. No, it's gone for North Wales, Matt. I think he's changed his decision. Oh, he's given it was, it. Um, oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, Sean Kenny got dragged to the floor. And this is crucial because we saw the kicking of Dave Gibbons. He's been pretty accurate today. You'd expect him to knock this one over and take the game to two scores. And discipline was an area we mentioned at the start of the first the first half. And Sort of let themselves down a little bit there on, on a couple of occasions. One by taking Abel out and then it was Sean Kenny who just a little bit too aggressive with Dave Gibbons. Yep, and he has been pinged. So there we go. 
And I guess it just shows how tight this game's been that uh, Dave Gibbons is looking to the tee here. We need that insurance policy, Kev. Yeah, it's the smart thing to do. Take the game. It's the Challenge Cup. You don't... A win's a win. If you win by a point or win by 50 points, it doesn't matter. You're in the hat. So that's what Gibbons and, and Forster, his coach, will be saying, I'm sure. Whack through. That was as clean a strike as you can get from... Dave Gibbons, who's scored one with a try. And it's another two points for the man from North Wales. 14-6. And it makes it a two-score game, as Kev was saying. Just racking up the points. Trying to take this game away from a dogged and brave Thato Heath. Looking to repeat their cup feats of 2019 when they made the fifth round the furthest they've ever been the fifth round also the furthest that crusaders have been in their professional guys both as the old crusaders the celtic crusaders the north wales crusaders as they are now fifth round the furthest they've been and that was last season so looking to replicate that here now of course for round four at the very least here oh it's a spill off the kickoff could it be costly? Matt Fletcher, rueful look. Well, I think, Matt, I think this is the hardest place on the field to defend. Just before you try, you've got to get back 10 metres in the middle of the field. And it's really easy for a ball player just to split the field and, and create numbers on one side. We see a lot of tries scored from this area. So Thato have got a chance to spread it here. McGann runs into the shoulder of Ryan Ellis and Matt Fletcher looking to make amends here. It's another big carry from Ascroft. And knocking on the door, Kenny Reardon straightens things up with Jones. Jones with the dummy. Good defence from North Wales. They had to make it. It was the gaffer who did it. It was Kenny. Kenny floats one. Oh, it's gone loose. And Fletcher leads the breakout here. It's a big carry from him. They're going to get it round the corner to Gibbons. And he's away in the end. Desperate, desperate tackling from Plato, who went from attack to defence on the back of that loose ball. He's fallen off a few tackles as well now, Matt. I think that's probably took the wind out the sail. Sean Kenny with a poor pass. In an area when they were almost posting points themselves, now they put themselves under pressure. And Carl Forster waiting for this ball at the play. The ball on the back of Brennan's carry. And has a little word for his opponent there. Forster will take it in. Forster will pump the legs. Thato building, or should I say, North Wales building here. Thato on the back foot. One tackle left in the set. It's Rainford. It's a kick in behind here, too much on that. His seven tackle set here for Thato Heath. And that is a relief given the situation they found themselves in, Kevin Brown. Yeah, and they look really dangerous, Thato Heath, in that previous set, up until you know, they've probably gone a little bit too excited and, and it was Sean Kenny who came up with the pass. I think the pass was on, it was just the execution. They just need to get, get back to what was really working for him in, you know, when they scored the try and just opening this field up and, and making sure that the North Wales outfit are defending the full width for the field because they are so big. They just want you ploughing straight into the middle. Jamie Tracy will do it all day long, but this is better when they have a little bit of deception and run down the edges. Play the ball on the 40. Kenny Jones. Now they're looking to spread it here. They've got that option with Dwyer. Dwyer's gone straight through a gap. Oh, it's offload. Has gone directly to Kieran Taylor. Oh, it was so close to opening up North Wales again, but Kieran Taylor, right place, right time for North Wales. Yeah, and it was Dwyer that occasion. They were scared of the threat of Pike. And he just came out. It was the same again. It was on. The pass was on, but the execution was poor. And it gives them another chance, but... I think the most important thing is, you know, we've just over 15 minutes or so to go. I know it's only a guy clock, it could be 20. 
but they are looking dangerous now, Matt. They are using the ball and finding space in this defence. Said Sean Costello turning up there for North Wales. It'll be kick away from Gibbons. Plenty of height on that one. McGann takes it well at the back, but that's a good chase from North Wales. Ellis involved there. Rainford was finishing off the tackle with Sean Costello as well. And it's Nathan Taylor for Thato. Looking to get them on the front foot, but we're in a real proper Challenge Cup third round tie here. Dan McGann's been challenged a few times with the kicks, but every time he's looked super confident and brought the, the ball back with interest. I think he's been superb today, Matt. Yeah, I think there would have been a few clubs who might have thought he's worth keeping an eye on. As Taylor kicks that one forward, play from Houghton. Oh, he's giving that one back. So another set of six here. Dwyer will act at dummy half. It's taken forward by Ashcroft. North Wales standing firm. Only Samuels involved in that challenge. As the ball finds Reardon. Now Jones. Jones delays the pass. McGarn chiming in. Cut out ball. Good scramble from North Wales though there. Matt Reed. Passes were just behind the there, wasn't there? Yeah, just lacked the Christmas, didn't it? Hesketh. Taken down. Close to the line. Oh, it's a knock on North Wales. Cheer that one like a try. Hesketh with the shove and frustration. But North Wales come up with the goods there. They just kept turning up. They just kept stemming the flow. Yeah, they're hanging on though. They're hanging on. I thought the the kick over and the regather by Thatawif on the left edge could amount to some points. But once again, almost in an identical area from where they spilt the ball in the previous set when they were attacking the line. They do that again. But they are in a better position now to defend. It's a set restart in the middle of the field and they fly into each other. It's just an amusing spat going on there between Jamie Tracy and Carl Forster. I'm sure come the end of the game they'll shake hands and, and have a pint. But he's, Tracy shoved Forster in the back when the ball was nowhere near. And then he gave him... Then Forster gave Tracy a shove at the play of the ball. And then Tracy gave him one back. It's, it's boiling up, that one. It's just simmering away. Here come North Wales. Andrade back on the field. Driving him forward into that defensive line. Ashcroft as well to bring him down. So it's Rainford. Now Gibbons dropped off. Nice line there from Ellis, who came back against the grain. As you were saying, we saw him in last year's Challenge Cup, didn't we, early on? Yeah, we did, and we mentioned his mother's cooking. As, uh, all the lads wind him up at Earl St James saying he doesn't like his mum's cooking, and his mum says it's always because he has a couple of drinks, so I'm not sure what the truth is. But she uh, she's had words with me a couple of times since that game, so I thought we'd mention her cooking again. Ryan Ellis always playing fantastically well for this North Wales side. I think he's been terrific on this left edge in the back row. Yep, Kev White says, I think Stato will win this despite the eight point deficit. Saying that is tipping this season is worse than Phil Gould's. Now, if you're not sure what that's all about, it's uh, Phil Gould said St. Helens could declare at half time. Uh, sorry, say uh, Penrith could declare at half time against uh, St. Helens in the World Club Challenge. We all know what happened there, don't we? So uh, he's been eating plenty of humble pie, and has Phil Gould, the uh, former Newtown Jets man. And he was. Plenty of administrative roles in Rugby League. Ex-head coach. There's a clip in behind for Brandon Wood. It's taken almost behind his line there by Thato. Heath. just about inside the right side of that whitewash, Kevin Brown. <laughs> yeah, that's great defence as well. Sean Kenny, unfortunately, it looks like he's going to have to leave the field. I think he's, he's caught himself in the face. He's, he's gone in hard and he was stumbling. He's not happy. I think he's calling for an elbow, Matt. Yeah, he's he's incensed, isn't he? A little live wire flying being... in off the back of this. <laughs> yeah, Carl Forster tried to uh, calm him down and got nowhere. So there we go. It's North Wales. I'm going to bring this out from right down by their own chalk here. 
Morley Samuels finds Forster. It's taking one for the team stuff at the moment, right into the face of aggressive defensive line work from Tato Heath Andrade with that particular carry. Just noticing Owen Abel was quite vocal there. But in the end, it's Gibbons whose kick looks to clear. Taken in, though, by Adam Saunders. And Thato will start this set in good ball here, Kev. Yeah, that was a terrific defensive display there from Thato. Then they've earned the right now to attack, so they'll have, I think that's the second tackle. They'll have four shots going in the 30 or 40. You just need to make it pay. You get the feeling that the clock is against them now. They don't score in the next couple of minutes. No, they'll start to yeah, panic. Kennedy to Reard. Kenny to Reard and should I say Pike. Good defence. They've got even the uh, player coaches out there trying to shut down Pike and he got a little swipe for his trouble. Oh, Nathan Taylor wasn't far away there for Thato. Eight points to deficit. Two score lead, but a score would certainly keep them in the game and get some nerves jangling in that North Wales side. Reardon plays the pass to Jones. Now it's McGarn. Sumner, oh, he ran into a roadblock there. He just penalty. needed to pass the ball, Matt. He did everything right there, Sumner, and he ran in, he, like you say, ran into the roadblock and they ripped the ball off him. I think he can find a flick pass or, you know, set his winger free. I'm going to try to Thato Eve. Sean Kenny taps. And here goes Hesketh. Well, that was full of intent, that. North Wales do well to stop him that time. Floated by Reardon into Dwyer. Oh, he's not far away again, but Horton making the challenge there along with Forster. Bodies putting themselves in the way here for the Crusaders. North Wales Crusaders as Pike goes for the line. And Dave Pike brings it back within four with a kick to come. The top scorer last season for this Thato Heath side has turned up with a huge score to make this very interesting. It's 14 10, kick to come. Yeah, and I think the, the the text message that you got by one of the fans saying, I think Thato Heath are going to win this game, I think I agree with him. If they can continue, you know, they're really dominant at the moment. And Dave Pike gets a reward. I think he's been sensational today out on that left. You know, he's made some fantastic breaks. On that occasion, it was his smarts. He just saw the defence clocking off. We mentioned how big and strong he's looked all day. They were never stopping him from there. And you can really see why he was the top try scorer for Thato Heath last year with the ability and the attributes that he's showing today. Yeah, the hyper man comes up with the hype play for this Thato Heath team. North Wales... Clinging on at the moment, it's a four-point lead for them. It could be cut to two. It's no formality from here. But he's lining it up, taking his time. What a kick this could be. What a finale we could be in for. Two really spirited, competitive teams, but it's a four-point lead that North Wales will cling on to here. Thato will get the ball back, barring something special from Dave Gibbons. But we are set either way on the back of that score for a huge finish here. National Conference League side Premier Thato Heath against League One North Wales. And as I say, it's a guide clock, so we're not 100% sure how long is left, but we do know that every second will count here for both these teams. That's a great what a carry. series that is for Max Dudley. Yes. It's been full throttle and you mentioned from both before, backs. Matt, you mentioned before about the fitness of the semi-professional, uh, the amateur side, what, what will the difference be? And for me, I think it's the amateur side that are coming home with a wet sail. They look the fittest, they look the most energetic, and they're looking to you know, get some more points and take them in the front for the first time in this game. Yeah, it's Hesketh on the back of Jamie Tracy. Sean Kenny picks off the back of that, looking for that point behind the rook. And Dryde having to do big 
Eighteen yards on the back pedal here, Forster, along with Rainford that time making the challenge. Jones gets the kick away. Oh, it's a scramble. Every time that ball goes up, the fans are jeering and cheering. It was well taken at the back by Dante Morley Samuels. Had to be cool and calm, he said. Like we were saying, there's a bit of a wind down there. And he was pretty comfortable under that for all it was wobbling about, Kev. Yeah, I thought he did really well to carry the ball and I thought Harry Reardon did fantastic. I think he's took a stinger to the shoulder just to stop him. But they'll be happy. The, the, the set after points. You no, know, it was physical, they got a good kick at the end and now they're starting you know, to dish a bit of aggression out and defensive aptitude towards their opposition again. They look fatigued now, you know, as Abel comes in, giving the forwards a bit of a break. Just need to keep the discipline. Well, just as you said, that Kev, a high shot on Owen Abel and that sparks a little bit. Dave Pike getting involved, really trying to calm things down. The smallest peacemaker, but he seemed to have the uh, right words. Oh, and Abel taken high. And uh, just saw a bit of Matt Reed in there. He's been working hard. He's got a bit of physicality about him. He he's, teaches health and well being at schools. And, you know, imagine he goes in and the kids will say, I saw you on telly the other day. Can't knock that, can you? Big, strong centre, Matt Reed. There's one area that Thatawith will be disappointed with today. It will be the discipline. You know, they got the points from the, the penalty kick before. Now they're getting position and territory. With the clock running down, it's really crucial now that that is the last penalty they give. They give themselves a chance to attack this line. But they've yeah, also got to defend their own line first. Yep, they would certainly be under the pump here. Rainford works it into Fletcher. Oh, big carry from him. Hesketh and Kenny clinging on. Just laying the path for another forward to come charging through in Sean Costello. Eating up metres here. Andrade wants one. Forster might get it instead. Now it'll be Gibbons. Double put from him. Oh, flashing pass to Reed. Well read that time by Thato. Heath. Abel. Further points might just kill the game off here. Andrade, what a flick pass that is to Reed. They might work it in through Ellis. And that is the game breaker for the North Wales Crusaders. They've toiled at times. They were pulled back by that Pike score. But they showed the class that exists in their ranks. 18 points to 10. And the try, a crucial one perhaps, as it might just take. North Wales Crusaders into the fourth round of this competition. Yeah, and I think the difference just in their attack today has been the middle of the field. They've really struggled with Forster. They've really struggled with Andre. And he came back on an angle there, Matt, and he just bounced off a couple, but then found a pass. And it came out to the left-hand side to Ryan Lewis, who still had a little bit to do. He drew the fullback. The fullback went off and he just threw the dummy. Nice, smart bit of play. A good reward for the hard effort he's put in today. I think that'll probably be it for the game. That a week will probably go short, you'd imagine. Try and get the ball back. Just really need to score, probably in the first set. Yeah, need to get their skates on. I'm afraid my ability to read is tested by this tweet. It's like Arteopteryx at Mastodon.ie says... Going by what I've seen of this and the Hurricanes game yesterday, the story of this round of the Challenge Cup is League One teams being run closer than comfortable by Heartland amateur teams. So apologies if I got your name wrong there. Um, but yeah, makes a really good point. I think we've just seen that in pure evidence today, haven't we? Uh, but uh, in the end, it looks as though North Wales are going to just come up with the goods. The kick, though, from Gibbons, no good this time, but it's... That two-score lead again. Scott Michalowski's just had a look at his watch, tellingly. We can't be far away, but Thato, you need to go for broke here. Anthony Atherton saying this will be a last, great last ten minutes. He's enjoying the viewing in amongst the toys and the snacks by the looks of things. There's a little rugby ball out there on the mat, so... Uh, everyone enjoying the game in the Atherton household by the looks of things. And both sides here 
Can be proud of the effort they put in. I think it's been well worthy of the decision to show this one. It's not over yet, but the odds are very much with North Wales here. No, so they are going to go short, as you say. Jones arcs it. Oh, and Reed didn't come up with it. Thato have. Oh, what's the call from Scott Michalaskis? Knock on, knock on. Ah, oh, he's gone against uh, Thato Heath here. So it's a North Wales Crusaders scrum. Or should I say play the ball, isn't it, these days? Yeah. Yeah, to play the ball in the middle of the field. And you'd imagine now they just took it up the jumper. And I'm sure that they'll be coming from all over trying to... Um, you know, rip the oh, ball no, and knock scrub. the ball out, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're slowing it right down now. So the put in from Rainford, able had to read again. Who is a handful? Everyone has turned up on both of these teams and delivered in terms of an engaging cup tie. Andrade that time stopped in his tracks. Costello, physicality, plenty of bumps and bruises. Is any of that slow snow left over anywhere? They might be cooling off in it after this one. Forster, kick tough from the player coach, and stuck stuck in the rook there completely was Hesketh and. Rainford thought he'd take advantage of some tired defenders there for North Wales. That is it. What a cup tie we've had. Mutual respect all round. Just where you want to see the National Conference League side. And Thato Heath Crusaders giving it their all, showing their class against the North Wales Crusaders side who just had too much on the day. But everything about this was what is everything that's good about rugby league, Kevin Brown.